on the inside. You'll never realize just how important it is. You see, in a couple of years from now, I, wanna, I, wanna ex- I want everything in my life to be accelerated to, to the place where God is pleased with me. Well done, good and faithful servant, is a statement that will only qualify the excellent. Because God is not a God of medi- mediocrity. So how do we explain the fact that the one who brought a more excellent sacrifice died or was killed? Here's the thing. The Bible doesn't say that they fought. It just said that the brother came up and killed him. Now here's the thing. The reason why I believe that his life was aborted before his full assignment was fulfilled is because of his wrong association. He should have been wise enough to think because I don't believe that he didn't know that his brother was envious of him. Because if the, it wasn't the first time that, 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 that this must have happened, that hatred must have built up over a period of time. And every time the brother spoke, like Pastor Peter said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever is in there will come out. So sooner or later, he must have heard some conversation about the fact that his brother is not pleased with the fact that he is excelling. What is that? The spirit of jealousy. Wrong associations can kill the dream that God has for you. And that's the reason why many times we're still alive, but the dream that God has given us is dead before we even get to the hundredfold return. Wrong associations. You see, sometimes people might say, you know what, you think too highly of yourself to to even think that somebody else is not worthy to come into your presence. No, I think very highly of the anointing. Because if I don't respect the anointing on my life, if you don't respect the anointing on your life, nobody else will. The anointing is so valuable that God trusted you, an earthen vessel made of clay, made of dirt, to be put on this earth and impart something out of himself into you. Something out of himself. From his very essence, from his very being, from from the very fiber of his being, he has imparted something on you that is an answer or an antidote for somebody else's pain. And because we're willing to sow, all the time I'm looking, who can I impact? Who can I speak? What what can I say? I don't know. I don't even look for Christians. I'll even, I I associate a lot with the world and I I listen all the time to people. I listen all the time to people and I want to know what is the gifts that God's put on the inside of me to impact somebody else's life. There might be one word, one word that you have on the inside of you. Don't look at other people and think, wow, that person has so much of wisdom. I feel so stupid. You are not stupid. Because you've made stupid mistakes doesn't mean you're stupid. But if you do it twice, you, you're on the way for qualifying yourself for, for, for stupidity. But, but, you know, we need to understand you are not stupid. Because I'm imparting this into you tonight, because Pastor Peter is imparting this into you, into you tonight, don't think that we are better than you we not because out there we still flesh and we can fall just as easily as anybody else. You respect and draw from the anointing while we're standing here. Because it's without the anointing, we are nothing, my friend. We are absolutely nothing. So with, with all that in mind, understand that sometimes your associations will destroy or, or abort your plan or kill God's plan and God's dream for your life before you get to that hundredfold. And because of associations, we tithe, we give, we sow seeds, and we wonder, how come he received it and I didn't? Association. Association. Because you cannot avoid the harvest that God's level of excellence prepositions you for. Number two, excellence in giving is not in the amount you give. Excellence in giving is not in the amount you give, but in how much of yourself you give when you give. How much of yourself are you giving when you give? In other words, when you, when you bring your offering into church, the Bible says in the Old Testament, what did they do? How did they bring it? They worshipped God with it. That's what they did. They didn't bring it to God and say, God, I'm so desperate. This is the last sin that I have. And I'm going to sow it because I am desperate for a miracle. Often t- I've done that. You know what? I still went home crying over that last bit of money that I gave away and felt depressed about it. Because that's the truth. We get depressed when we give the last sin. We do get depressed. So don't act like a, don't look at me so spiritual like you never got depressed. Now come on. <laughs> don't make me feel like I'm the only sin in the room. <laughs> but I've been there and I've done that so often. But I realize something when I'm giving. I come there and I, and I just want to worship God with my giving. I want him to know that this means nothing to me. But you know what I pride myself in? Is when I serve in the local church. 
That's how much of yourself you give. See, giving your, paying your tithes is one thing. Giving your offerings is another thing. But when you're giving of your time, you are investing of the clay into the kingdom to fulfill the dream of this ministry. Because without you, Pastor Theo cannot do it. Yes, he may not be here as often as he used to before. That doesn't matter. The vision is still here. That's why the building is standing. And for as long as the vision is in his heart, it will come to pass whether you want to be a part of it or not. The only difference is there'll come a time when you'll be sitting right in the back seat and thinking, I wish I was a part of this right from the very beginning. I wish I was a part of it. See, the time when I was sitting there, I was depressed. I had lost my businesses. I, I, my vehicles were repossessed. My house was repossessed. And I thought, how could a God who promises all of these things, when I tithed and I gave offerings, how can a God who promised all these things still didn't come through for me? You know why? I never gave of myself. I thought I could bribe him with monetary value and I wasn't willing to give of myself. When I laid myself down and I said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Do you know how much of tears I've shed over that scripture because I felt the pain of crucifixion with betrayal. I felt the pain of crucifixion even thinking that God had betrayed me and had not been true to his word because how could my, my, my car be, cars be repossessed? How could my businesses go? How could my, my, my houses go? Three times I almost went bankrupt. Three times I was a Christian. Three times I was still serving in my local church that I served in then. And when I came to, the, to this church in the old building, and, and I, I don't even have time to go into the testimony, but when I came and I sat on those seats and wept like a baby and said, God, do you still love me? Where is the God that said he's the God of love? And I stood there and I wept like a baby. And I had this vision of him standing on the platform, sitting on the platform. And he looked over at me and he said, come on over. I felt my whole spirit leave my body, four, four, five rows behind I felt my whole spirit leave my body, walk onto the platform. My eyes were closed. I felt the glory of God all around. He said, come and sit on my lap. And as, as my spirit, I felt that in my spirit that, that I was sitting on his lap. And he pulled me close. When he pulled me close, I sensed his heartbeat. He said, you're too stressed out over the cares of this world. Allow me to love you just a little bit. That's all that matters. Because he loves us so much. And because he loves us so much, do you think he wants you to live in poverty? Do you think he wants you to have lack? Do you think he wants you to keep crying the same tears year after year after year over the lack in your life? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He wants you to have the best. He wants you to excel in life. He wants you to reach out for greater and to reach out for more because he has big dreams for you and I. So excellence in giving is not in the amount you give, but in how much of yourself you give when you give. In 2 Samuel 24, verse 24, it says, But King David said to Aruna, No, but I will buy it of you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God of that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. You see, David was not willing to do something that didn't cost him. Sometimes it will require a sacrifice when you give, but know this, that God will never leave you. Uh, or, or, you know, because the Bible says those who sow in tears will, go, will come back reaping with joy. God will never leave you in lack. He will never leave you in want because he loves you too much. He loves you too much to leave you the way you are. He does. You see, the complacent will always give as long as it costs them nothing. The complacent will always give as long as it costs them nothing. When the excellent give, they pride themselves in offering their all. When the excellent give, they pride themselves in offering their all. You see, when you give, you must just say, Father, use me. Whatever you want me to do, just use me. Doesn't matter what position you are in. Doesn't matter, you know, or how difficult it may seem. Just say, God, use me. Because I've been put on this earth to fulfill something that you knew that I needed to do upon this earth. And while I'm here, I want you to use me so that your dream can be fulfilled for my life. The moment you say that and you have that kind of attitude with God, God straight away knows that he can position you for that hundredfold. Because you want to give off yourself. You want to let go of everything that is on the inside of you so that you can, you can be the one that God is using to fulfill his dream. Number three. 
Walking in excellence requires a consistent investment of your time without complaining. Walking in excellence requires a consistent investment of your time without complaining. Matthew chapter 20, verse 10 to 11, it says, Now when the first came, they supposed they would get more, but each of them also received a denarius, and when they received it, they grumbled at the owner of the estate. Here it's talking about the, the owner of the estate who went out and got workers to do some work for the day, and he went out in the morning. And when he went out in the morning, he got a couple of guys over, and they started to work. A little later in the day, he went out and he got a few more workers, and he said, whatever is due to you, I will pay at the end of the day. And it went on and on. Uh, for a, you know, a couple of times, he did that. But know this, that some of the most depressing people you can find are grumblers, complainers. Those are the most depressing people you can find. There is something about the atmosphere of a complainer that he carries with him, and he, he carries with him a spirit of depression. A spirit of depression. Let me, talk, let me give you a principle on depression. Depression is proof that the voice of deception Depression is proof that the voice of deception has drowned the voice of truth. The voice of deception has drowned the voice of truth. The moment you see a depressed person, know this, that he has allowed the voice of truth in his life to be drowned by the voice of deception. The moment you listen to the wrong voices in your life, you, you're heading for disaster. You will head your life down the destructive path of, of loneliness because of the fact that you're listening to the wrong voices in your life. So, so why is it that we mustn't listen to grumblers and complainers? You see, these guys were complaining at the end of the day when each one got the same wage. Why? Because they thought that they deserve more than other people. And that's the problem with complainers. You see, complainers disqualify themselves for a hundredfold return because their personal desires drives them to esteem themselves higher than others around them. Complainers disqualify themselves for a hundredfold return because their personal desires drives them to esteem themselves higher than others around them. See, complainers always think that they're better than everybody else. And because they think they're better than everybody else, they will complain about everybody else. And as they complain and grumble about everybody else, they will make everybody else depressed around them. So the moment you have somebody who complains, don't be afraid to tell them to shut up. Look at the person next to you and say, neighbor. Okay, let's, let's get up now. Say, neighbor, I hope that you're not a complainer. Because if you want to complain, in my presence, talk to the hand. Okay? Next point, complainers will walk over everyone to get whatever they want because they are driven by greed. Complainers will walk over everyone to get whatever they want because they are driven by greed. Complainers are greedy people. If I can't get for myself what I need or what I think I deserve, then I'm gonna complain about the fact that other people got it. And instead of sitting back and thinking, what is the reason that they got the promotion and I didn't? Maybe there's something lacking in my life. That's the reason I didn't get that promotion. Maybe I need to put a little more of myself or give a little more of myself in order to receive that. So complainers will always grumble and complain about everybody else and they will walk over anyone to get what they want. You know why? Because they're greedy people. They don't think about other people. They're selfish people. All they think about is themselves. Last point, number four. The rewards of excellence is in completing the task and never about competing for a reward. The rewards of excellence is in completing the task and never about competing for a reward. Now, in life, there are many, many great starters, but very, very few finishers. See, if you look around, you know, I know we have excuses for not being able to come, and some people have valid excuses. But when we started off, we had a lot more than when we finished. You know why? Because when people start off, they start off great. When you look at the Comrades Marathon, they start off great. There are so many great starters. When you look at the finish line, there are very few finishers. Very few finishes. In the arena of excellence, my friend, you must be a finisher. You don't, you, your life is not validated by the way you start. Your, the value of your life is determined by the way you finish. And if you start off great, you must make sure you finish great as well. Just finish the race. Don't go halfway and say you need to take a break. 
Just don't do a few things and say, well, I'm too tired today, so I'm not going to finish it. Every day you keep doing a little more in order to complete the task because at the end of the day, people are only rewarded for, for the completion of the assignment that they've been given. They're never rewarded for how great they start. Nobody gets a medal for starting at, at the start line of the comrades. Anybody ever got a medal at the start? Nobody does. You get a reward at the end. Why? Because you're a great finisher. You get something at the end of the race because you're a great finisher. Be determined to finish. In Matthew 20, verse 1 to 16, we find that the landowner goes out in the morning, he hires laborers for the day at an agreed wage. And the third hour, he does the same thing. At the sixth and the ninth hour, he does the same thing. But at the end of the day, everybody got the same reward. You don't look at the reward of, that other people get unless it's to motivate you to do greater and to excel in life. You always think about the fact that I will do this to the end, no matter what the price, no matter what the cost, I will keep pursuing excellence. I will keep pursuing greater. I will keep reaching out for more because I want to be a great finisher at the end of the day. When you always think about it, let this one picture be in your mind because of the fact that you cannot guarantee tomorrow. When you are lying in that box, will people be standing up front telling the truth about the good things or the good way, the way you lived your life? Or will they be lying about the things that, you, that they're talking about? Because I've been and I've done many funerals where people lied through the teeth about the person who lied in the box. Because I knew even the people who lied in the box when they were alive. And when they, while they were alive, people didn't have many good things to say about them. People didn't have many good things to say about them. And I wondered about that. You know why? Because people like that live their life selfishly. You see, when I expire, you know, if for any reason I do not last until Jesus returns, but if I expire, I want people to stand up and testify of how they're living their lives based on the fact that there was one day, one second, or one moment, I said something valuable that changed the direction of the life away from a dead-end road to a, to a road of vision, to a road of great dreams doesn't matter how young you are. doesn't matter how old you are. He said, one time in my life, I was intimidated by older people sitting in the meeting because I thought they, you know, they would never receive from a young person. But I re realized something. It's not about the man. It's about the anointing. Amen. It's about what you have on the inside of you. That's what's important. What you have on the inside of you. You see, your seeds together with your time that you willingly sow your seeds together with your time that you willingly sow into helping fulfill the vision of your local church releases a supernatural harvest for your personal dreams. Your seeds together with your time that you willingly sow into helping fulfill the vision of your local church releases a supernatural harvest for your personal dreams. Supernatural harvest. Your seed together with your time. Seed and time. Your seed and your time is required. Keep sowing. Keep sowing your time. Keep sowing your seeds. Keep sowing your time. Keep sowing your seeds. Because then you're positioning for that hundredfold that I spoke about when we started off tonight. You're always positioning. You're always positioning. Because your life has greatness in your tomorrow. There is greatness in your tomorrow that heaven dreams about. There is something that God has that he dreams about every day for you. And I want my God to smile down upon me every time I open my eyes. You see, many of us are born with great dreams. You know, people get ugly when they complain. I've never seen an ugly child being born into this earth. Every child that's born is beautiful. Nobody looks at the newborn baby and say, you ugly baby, goo, 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 goo. Nobody does that. They say, you are beautiful. You're my champion. You're daddy's champion. You're daddy's little princess. You're mommy's beautiful baby. And you, one day you're going to grow up to be something great. Let's change the generation to come. Amen. Prophesy into your tomorrow. Because the prophecy of your tomorrow lies within your voice of truth. You can prophesy your greatness into existence. You see, over my past will never determine my future. My future is determined by the decisions I make today based on the voice of truth that will speak into my life. I, in, in, I had to fight demons of divorce. I had to fight demons of alcohol. As you know, I, I think I, I've told you about my dad that was an alcohol all his life. Before he died, he gave his life to Jesus. So that's a great testimony right there. 
But you know, I had to fight all those demonic spirits in my family, generational curses of alcoholism, generational curses of divorce, generational curses of adultery, generational curses of, of failure in business. I kept fighting it all the time because it didn't matter how much I failed, I kept getting up. And I said, I'm going to make something of my life, even if it hurts on the inside. Today, I can tell you this much. I may weep or shed a few tears over yesterday's pain, but when you see those tears, it's not about the pain. It's about His grace that got me through that pain to get me to a place where I can keep dreaming big and keep reaching out for more. And you must realize one thing tonight, that when I spoke about Cain and Abel, your associations are so very important concerning your future. Show me your friends, I'll show you tomorrow. Because my friends has a voice. And the voice that they speak into my life, if it's a voice of deception, they're killing me. They're killing the dreams that God has for me. If it's a voice of truth, they're building me up. You're not stupid to not know when people are hurting you. You can't be that stupid unless you're a pervert and you, and you desire pain that you'd have people keep hurting you all the time. How long are you going to have the same stupid friends that keep hurting you and betraying you? Make a choice. Walk away from pain. Walk away from the hurt of yesterday by saying, so far and no more. Think about the ocean as I close. That God designed everything and put it in place with a spirit of excellence. That is why even though you go to the deepest abyss of the ocean and you wonder how does the water stay there when it comes to the shores because God prophesied and he said so far and no more. There are times in the storms of your life that you must say to certain relationships so far and no more because you're hurting my hundredfold return. You're causing a blockage on my hundredfold return. You see, you can give a million rand doesn't mean to say that you're going to reap a hundredfold. You need to understand that. That tonight, about giving, change your whole perspective. Give of yourself. The next time you sow your seed, say, Father, I'm willing to serve. And watch and see if God doesn't do something incredible in your life in the next couple of months. As a matter of fact, I prophesy tonight that if you are willing to give of yourself together with your seeds, give of your time, that before this year ends, before the dawn uh, uh, dawns, or before the morning dawns upon 2009, that something incredible will happen in your life, that you will realize that God's giving me a hundredfold, that I'm positioned for a hundredfold. You need to understand that I'm prophesying over you tonight, that if you're willing to take this and apply it to your lives, your life will change. Okay, let's stand together. Amen. I know, was a, I know I was a bit serious tonight, but this is serious business because too often giving, you know, the idea of giving or the thought of giving, is a, is a, there's a spirit of deception that comes with it. There's a, there's a spirit that really lies to us about giving. You need to understand, when you give, you give of yourself. That's what God looks at, how much of yourself you're giving. Hold the hand of the person next to you, and I want you to think about this as a closing prayer. I want you to think about every curse that is in your life right now. And as a person is in agreement with you, we're in unison tonight as we're breaking the curses right now. And just, I'm just going to spend about a, a minute max to pray and break every curse of your life. Because right now I can tell you I'm living that dream that I'm talking about. And I know that God has bigger dreams, but I'm living it now to a place where I don't have stress anymore. I mean, the, the biggest stress I have is making sure that, you know, I've eaten for the day so that, I, so that I don't pass out while driving down the road. But it's not a really a stress. And it's beautiful to be at this place. And I want you to have it. Because this is the God life. This is the Christ life. And I'm going to impart it to you tonight, okay? So let's believe God that every curse is broken. Father, I've spoken from my heart tonight what you have placed deep on the inside. Because of the many years of deception listening to the wrong voices in my life and not getting to the place where you desired for me to be. And I know I, I still have a long way to go, Father. But tonight, where I am, I want every person to be at. And not only that, but to excel and supersede everything that you've done in my life. Oh God, that's the cry of my heart. That every person sitting here that have invested their time to come and listen, to receive and draw from the fountain that you've placed on the inside of me, that they will live that dream no matter what their age, no matter what their creed, no matter what their color. And tonight I break down the bondages and the barriers that the devil has put on these, your precious saints, Father. Every lie 
of the devil, everything that, are battling, that they are battling with in their mind. I break the curses in Jesus' name and I release them into the hundredfold return harvest that God has promised in his word. Tonight, may the heavens gather to bear witness that I have prophesied that before the Syrians, they will reap the rewards of the hundredfold as they give of themselves together with their seeds into this ministry. That there will be an anointing on the celebration. That with this catching the spirit of revival, they will catch the revival of living in the hundredfold return. They will catch the revival of living in the excellence of that God demands. Your majesty, you are the excellent one. And tonight, may we live, dream, breathe excellence all the days of our lives in Jesus' name.